so that's wonderful. Thanks, Ellen. Our next poetess, his name is Sara. She's world famous. She just gave me a little uh, extra info about her. She's books uh, entitled Water Rhythms and Synapse Shots, which are available this evening. She's a member of a poetry group called Fire of Prometheus. She has recited poetry throughout the world, Paris, streets of Cambridge, and now the town. <laughs> Aren't you lucky? Are you out of it? I'm not out of it, are you? She's going to speak for herself. It's, uh, she has a very strong commitment to uh, political issues, and uh, she's here tonight. Give her a very warm welcome, will you, Kassara? We're gathered here, Boston Women's Voices, and this poem is dedicated to the woman's voice that spoke in Washington, D.C. today. More on AIDS. Slip into ignorance. Slip into condoms. Slip into rubber gloves. The dentists, the doctors, the police. Slip into the loss of civil rights. Slip into the fight for the right to life. Slip into mass hysteria. Slip over the edge. The test results are positive. Slip out the back door of the hospital. Slip over the border for anti-AIDS drugs. Slip AIDS funding into the military budget. Slip the virus into world markets and collect the blackmail. Slip back into the closet. Slip AIDS dead bodies into radioactive containment centers. Slip into rage. Step on the truth. Slip into a straight jacket. Slip old wives' tales back into the culture. Slip sex education into the perspective of death. Slip celibacy past the clergy. Slip condoms into church doctrine. Slip virginity back into fashion. Slip quarantine signs into the hands of public servants. AIDS babies born to die. These two poems are part of a series of poetry that I refer to as um, technobirth poetry. And I think it's a theme for both men and women. Creative impulsion. The new stork is a nitrogen tank where genius sperm coolly wait for ripe eggs to dance with in the transparent glass halls of the test tube, a private club where physician Frankenstein's sell their wares and the public watches warily, a product of embryonic process too virginal for the 21st century. That was written in 1985. And then, along about 1989, this case hit the courts. Tennessee, in the case of the seven. I'm a frozen embryo. Only the judge can decide where I'll go. My mother made me. My father, too. Divorce causes the question of what I am or who. Do I belong 
to mommy's? Or do I belong to daddy? Isn't it 50-50? Quick, cut me back into two quickly. Can it really be a judge's decision to determine if I'm a person or a possession? On my travels this summer with the fire of Prometheus, I had the opportunity to see California for the first time, or parts of it, and I also got the opportunity to hear about two disasters. So this is a brand new poem. Toxic spills. Give me chills. Put on your army boot drills. Fish are glowing without gills. Toxins, toxins, kill and kill. No cheap thrills, no cleanup thrills. Detox, fish, put back on grills. More support for newfound ills. Climb the epic and moral hills. Still cleaning waste from old time mills. Cover it up with numbing pills. Who's gonna, who's gonna pay the bills? We must. Unite our collective wills. No more, no more toxic spills. This poem was written in December 1990, and alas, it again has time value. They call it the Middle East Theater. War ripples, a feather in the cap of nationalism, cue cards that deal out propaganda in precise ambiguities and detailed sound bites. The victims and the troops, one interview at a time. Thank you.